a day or so before the very first anniversary of India's National Space Day, which is on August 23rd, and exactly a year after Chandrayaan 3's successful landing on the South Pole region of the Moon, scientific results from the mission have revealed the evidence of a long lost ocean of magma under the lunar surface. The analysis also reveals material from deep below the moon from far away, from over 350 kilometers away. These findings reveal new avenues for exploration of the lunar surface with excitement for identification and potential future targets for landing mission based on such results. These are findings from the scientists at Physical Research Laboratory or PRL in Ahmedabad and is the first set of data from the Chandrayaan-3 mission to be published. The data is an analysis of the lunar soil in the moon's south polar region, which faces the Earth, and the very first samples to be studied from this region of the moon. The findings reveal that there exists evidence through chemical remnants in the rocks of a former ocean of magma, that is lava which is under the ground. This adds on to evidence that is presented from other equatorial and northern hemisphere samples from the moon, where missions like Apollo and Luna landed and where samples were analysed. And it turns out that the samples that the Indian astronomers studied all the way from the southern polar region are very similar in terms of chemical makeup despite the geographical distance with these other samples. The readings here were taken by the Pragyan rover, which travelled about 103 metres on the surface of the moon and conducted analyses, in situ analyses, at 23 different locations. This analysis that was performed by the Pragyan rover further revealed a mixture of magnesium and olivine compounds, which typically exist deep within the moon. Sometimes people call it the mantle, although this is a contentious term when it comes to the moon, and exists at nearly about 100 kilometers depth. The team concluded that this material that they are seeing in their samples comes from a very large impact crater that is over 2,500 kilometers wide in the nearby South Pole, and this is called the South Pole Aitken Basin or SPA Basin. And this makes the findings very unique. Before we go into that, let's first look at the magma ocean hypothesis. For this, we need to take a step back and understand how the moon formed. The most commonly accepted hypothesis or theory for the formation of the moon is that a Mars-sized ancient planet called Theia collided into ancient or proto-Earth around 4.5 billion years ago when the planets were just forming. This theory is called the giant impact hypothesis. Most astronomers seem to agree that this is how the moon formed because of data that we have that compares the Earth and the moon's composition. So Theia collided either head-on or partially into proto-Earth. This then ended up melting both bodies, either partially or fully. And this then resulted in a bunch of rocks that were ejected and started orbiting the Earth, looking similar to Saturn rings. Over a course of few days, these rocks would have accreted together, coalescing to form the Moon as we see it today in orbit around Earth. This theory, like I said, is supported by analysis of lunar crust and Earth's crust, which share some material that could have occurred only through direct contact. Now, through the process of accretion itself, there is temperature that is released. And this would have likely melted the newborn moon, either fully or partially. The presence of this magma ocean on the moon is all but accepted. However, experts are still divided as to whether this magma ocean was global or partial. The findings, especially from this paper, lean more towards global, although there isn't really anything to disprove the partial ocean hypothesis either. Because the Indian mission is the first to land in the southern polar region of the moon facing the Earth. And the soil analysis here, which are present in high lands, that is higher altitude areas, are so uniform in composition and nearly identical to samples that have been received from over 3,500 kilometers away. These are samples from the Apollo 16 missions from US and the Luna 20 missions from former USSR. And this 
proves that there is a strong support for the hypothesis that there was a global magma ocean because the contents across the moon of the soil or the regolith seems to be similar. The next section of the findings is to do with the impact at the southern pole of the moon. Now the moon sports a giant impact crater right near its south polar region. It is one of the largest impact craters in the solar system. It is the largest crater on the moon. It's also the deepest and the oldest. It has the south pole of the moon on one side and the Aitken Basin on the other side and therefore it's called the South Pole Aitken Basin. And the width of it is 2,500 kilometers. Its surface depth is 10 kilometers, which means after whatever impact had occurred and soil and material had been ejected and everything came down back again and the land formed again, the depth from the surface of the moon to this land is 10 kilometers. And this crater formed over 4.2 billion years ago when the present day moon itself was relatively very young. Now the landing point is called the Shiv Shakti point and this is located around 350 kilometers from the rim of this basin. 350 kilometers from the basin, the soil samples contain olivine, which is typically found very deep in any astronomical body because it's heavy and it sinks into the bottom or the core or the mantle of the body because of its weight. This material is thought to have been ejected from the mantle of the moon from over 100 kilometers depth after the SPA impact event occurred. When a large body comes and impacts another astronomical body and melts the material there, which will obviously happen at the point of contact, the ejecta, the material that is ejected, is spewed out for thousands of kilometers. It then falls down like a rainfall from space and mixes with the soil present all around. So this ejecta from the South Pole Aitken Basin impact was spread out for hundreds of kilometers around the basin and it mixed with the regolith, which is the name for the lunar soil. And this entire mixture also, remember, constantly undergoes weathering due to exposure to space and the solar wind. There's no atmosphere, so the lunar particles are constantly interacting with charged particles or ions from the sun. Now, it's important here to note that whenever we go for sample analyses on the moon, the areas like this, where there is a rim of a crater, which gives access to surface material, material from depth of about 10 kilometers or so, just because of the nature of the location, as well as material from the very depth because of the impact crater, makes this kind of spot very unique for soil analysis and sample analyses. And in fact, the authors that I spoke to for, a, for the story about this, there's also a text story that'll be linked below, are very excited about this and are hoping that one day such samples can actually make it back to the earth, into the lab where we can study and obtain more information about the evolution of the moon. And this is precisely the reason why this landing spot was chosen for Chandrayaan-3 mission. The Pragyan 3 rover descended onto the Shiv Shakti point and this was the first landing in the earth facing part of the southern polar region of the moon. This happened a year ago on 23rd of August 2023 and after the Pragyan rover got out of the lander, it soaked in some sunlight because it runs on solar power. Once it obtained enough power, it started traversing the region and moved a total of over 100 meters on the surface and performed in situ analysis. After 14 days, the lunar night sets in, which also lasts for 14 Earth days, and therefore the rover went to sleep because it could not charge its solar panels. Now, the analysis on the regolith samples here was performed by the instrument called the Alpha Particle X-ray Spectrometer or the APXS instrument on board the rover. These observations provide the first measurements revealing uniformity in large regions of the regolith in this southern highland regions. They are also the very first in situ measurements of chemical composition of high latitude, that is closer to the poles, lunar highlands or elevated regions. This is extremely exciting because there is also the presence of water closer to the south pole. On the other side of the moon, China's Chang'e missions are also performing in situ analysis. They have also landed in similar regions, but on the far side, which we cannot see from Earth. Now, as analysis, these were the first bits of data to come from Chandrayaan-3 mission. And we know that going forward, there are going to be many more papers that are 
about to come out. PRL and ISRO are also working on the Chandrayaan-4 mission while these analyses continue. And this is a mission that is slated to launch in 2028. This will likely land on the South Pole and bring back samples to Earth for analysis here. So early observations, such as the ones that were carried out by the Pragyan rover and which the data is being analyzed right now, are a big help to figuring out where to go in the future. And both Chandrayaan-4 as well as Chandrayaan-5 mission, which is the LUPEX mission in association with Japanese space agency JAXA, will also determine their landing sites based on the findings that we find from this mission. 